everyone, you're watching Killer Bites, and today we're talking about the absolutely heart-wrenching case of Evelyn Boswell, a toddler who went missing in Tennessee. The investigation into Evelyn Boswell's disappearance began on February 18th, 2020, when her grandfather, Tommy Boswell Sr., reported her missing, telling authorities that he hadn't seen her since Thanksgiving. An official investigation was launched immediately, and on February 19th, 2020, Authorities issued an Amber Alert in Tennessee for Evelyn, including details that the adorable blue-eyed, blonde hair baby stood at only two feet and weighed only 28 pounds. At first, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children released information that Evelyn was last seen December 26, 2019. Now, this date was provided by her mother, Megan Maggie Boswell. But this goes against other dates and details that surfaced in their initial investigation. And here's where the story starts to unravel. After the Amber Alert was issued, Sheriff Jeff Cassidy of Sullivan County, Tennessee addressed the media, stating that they had received conflicting reports of exactly when Evelyn disappeared. Through their questioning, they determined that Evelyn had most likely not been seen since December 10th or 11th of 2019, and that the last person to see her was apparently Evelyn's babysitter. Authorities felt that this information was probably more reliable because it was coming from a source outside of the family. And they started to realize that Megan's reports just didn't seem to be adding up. Not to mention that apparently every time she spoke to police, her story would change, which feels like a big red flag. The investigation continued with urgency. And on February 21st, 2020, investigators released information that they were looking for a gray BMW and that the person or people inside the gray BMW could have information about where Evelyn might be. But despite receiving over 300 leads, nothing developed. On the same day, Megan Boswell spoke publicly for the first time, stating, the reason I didn't report it or anything is because I knew the person who had her and I didn't want them to run away with her. And as soon as they thought anything was going on, they just kind of vanished. So I'm just worried, you know, about where they're at, what they're doing with her at this point in time. But strangely, she still wouldn't say who she thought might have her, only saying that they wouldn't answer her phone calls and pleading that they should bring her back home. She also stated that she would do things differently if she had the chance, like calling authorities on day one. But she ultimately didn't because she was concerned that they would run. Tommy Boswell Sr. also spoke on February 21st, confirming that he called Tennessee's Department of Children's Services after apparently growing concerned that he hadn't seen the child since Thanksgiving. And that's when he dropped another interesting detail. He mentioned that he had apparently spoken to his ex-wife and Megan's mom, Angela, about the missing child. And when he told her that if Evelyn didn't come home, he was going to report her missing, Angela said to him, you better not, you're going to regret this. That's a pretty wild response to give to the concerned grandfather of a missing child. This was a busy day because Angela and her boyfriend, William McLeod, were arrested in connection with the gray BMW. And they were charged with theft of over $2,500. It would later come to light that the car belonged to Melissa Wood, who was the mother of Megan's boyfriend, Hunter. She was selling the car to Megan, who was buying it for her mother. Well, Megan took the car to get it checked out. But weirdly, Melissa claims, she just took the car and never came back with it. So yeah, it sounds like Megan pretty much stole this car from her boyfriend's mom. Meanwhile, Sullivan County released a reward for Evelyn, with Tommy Boswell Sr. donating $10,000 to the reward pot and Tommy Boswell Jr. also pitching in $10,000. Even the sheriff himself donated $1,000 to the cause of finding Evelyn Boswell, which shows just how deeply everyone in the community was affected by her disappearance. The search continued on for several days, and Megan Boswell spoke again on February 24th with, you guessed it, a new story. This time, she stated that she knew where Evelyn was and that her mother, Angela, took Evelyn to Mendota, a small town in Virginia. She said, I told the TBI, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, 
where to find her in Mendota. My mom took her to a campground in a silver camper and if they don't go tonight, I'm going to go find her myself because I've told them and they're not really like taking it seriously. However, when speaking to investigators, it was discovered that this story didn't add up again. They confirmed that they did check the campground the night before and that their search turned up nothing. Meanwhile, Angela and William appeared in a North Carolina court in connection to the car. William spoke about the car and mentioned it was a gift from Megan and saying that he had no idea that anything was wrong with the car. Finally, Sullivan County authorities arrested Megan because they were fed up with her continuously changing the story. With Captain Andrew Siebel going so far as to say, every time we talk to her, her story changes. I am serious when I say, every single time. Clearly frustrated with Megan, they charged her with one count of false reporting and held her on $25,000 bond. By this point, over 500 tips had come in, including a tip to search for Evelyn in a North Carolina pond that sat on the property of Mary McLeod, William's grandmother. Mary told authorities that William was devious enough to be involved in something and noted that when he arrived at her house, his feet were wet. But around 5.30 p.m., authorities deemed that the search was inconclusive and the search for Evelyn continued on. On February 26th, William finally spoke, saying that he had only seen Evelyn one or two times since June 2019, when he started dating her grandmother, Angela. He even offered to take a polygraph test and provide DNA samples to help aid in the investigation. Around the same time, Megan also claimed that she was unable to take a polygraph test because she was pregnant. And we won't get into the reliability of polygraph tests here, but what's interesting is that she said she couldn't do this because she was supposedly pregnant. However, officials said that Sullivan County hadn't asked Megan to take a polygraph test because they don't use them. However, Captain Andrew also spoke out about this saying, I cannot confirm or deny her pregnancy. What I can tell you is that the jail medical staff keeps track of the pregnant inmates for obvious purposes. On Monday, the 24th of February, there were four pregnant inmates. On Tuesday, the 25th of February, there were four pregnant inmates. Megan Boswell was booked in there at 9.19 p.m. on Tuesday. The pregnant inmate count went up to five on Tuesday, the 25th at 11 p.m. when a pregnant woman was booked in. On Wednesday, the 26th of February, the pregnant inmate count was five total. So it's pretty clear that although he can't actually say it, he didn't believe that she was pregnant at all. The search continued and after a few quiet days, a terrible discovery was unfortunately made. On March 6th, police found remains in a shed on Tommy Sr.'s property. On March 9th, Megan appeared in court again and her bond was increased to $150,000 with authorities stating, we thought it was appropriate under the circumstances to file a motion to increase bond and to have a hearing as soon as possible. Around this time, Angela spoke out saying that she hadn't seen the child since September. She thought Evelyn may have been removed from Megan's custody and placed with a foster family, which is what prompted her to get back in touch with her daughter, Megan, again. Though she mentioned that she didn't want to bring it up to Megan for fear of upsetting her and she felt her daughter would talk about it when she was ready. Authorities would later confirm that the remains tragically belonged to Evelyn Boswell, and in addition to her body, they found other items that would make sense for a toddler, some clothes, toys, and diapers. At the time, authorities sealed records of her autopsy and how she died in order to maintain the integrity of the investigation. On March 12th, the Boswell family released a statement saying, the immediate Boswell family, excluding Angela Jones Boswell, of Evelyn are in anguish and grief over their loss. It has been a very rough and trying time for everyone. At this time, they do not want to speak publicly in regards to the tragedy. They are still trying to process what has happened. They ask for the media and the public to respect their wishes. So much of Evelyn's story still remains a mystery, and it wasn't until a recent hearing in September 2022, which was set to determine if Evelyn's autopsy photographs should be shown to a jury, 
that we learned more of the truly gruesome details about what investigators actually found that day. Brian Fraley from the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation spoke during the hearing, stating that when they responded to a phone call from Tommy Sr., they turned their search to investigate a shed on his property. Inside the shed, they found a playhouse, and behind the playhouse, they found Evelyn's remains placed in a trash bag with other trash bags surrounding it. The coroner said that Evelyn was alive when she was placed headfirst into the trash can, which is just absolutely awful, and that apparently it was the fact that she was placed headfirst, wrapped in a blanket, that suffocated her, along with a small piece of aluminum foil that they found in her throat that was blocking her airway. That poor, poor baby. At some point, Megan changed her story again and claimed that Evelyn had suffocated while she co-slept in bed with her and her boyfriend, Hunter. But experts claimed that at the time of her death, Evelyn was too old to die in that way. So this seems just like another one of Megan's lies and Evelyn's death was ultimately ruled a homicide. Unfortunately, there isn't much of a conclusion to this story yet. As Megan's trial is set for February of 2023 at the earliest, she faces a slew of charges, including one count of felony murder in the perpetration of child abuse, one count of felony murder in perpetration of child neglect, one count of aggravated child abuse, one count of aggravated child neglect, one count of tampering with evidence, one count of abuse of a corpse, one count of failure to report a deal under suspicious, unusual, or unnatural circumstances, and 12 counts of false reports. So, hopefully, one day, justice will be served for sweet Evelyn. But if there's anything positive to come out of this case, it's the passage of Tennessee's Evelyn's Law, which mandates that it's illegal not to report a child 12 or younger missing within a reasonable time and no more than 24 hours after their disappearance, hopefully helping to prevent future cases like this from happening. Well, folks, that's all for today. What do you think happened to Evelyn? Is Megan guilty? Was it Angela? Do you have any new information on this case? I'm Lindsay, and we'll see you next time on Killer Bites.